There has been sentencing in the case of the Team USA gymnastics coach and doctor, Larry Nasser. So Larry Nasser has received his sentencing, there he is. The USA gymnastics doctor was convicted of multiple counts revolving around sexual assault and abuse of over 100 young females. Vox reports he received 40 to 175 years in Michigan State Prison for criminal sexual abuse. In addition to 60 years, the 60 years he received on federal child pornography charges in July. So the minimum sentence, it seems, is 100 years. Um, Judge Rosemary Aquilina said uh, she was signing his death warrant in her statement, also saying that it is her honor and privilege to sentence him, and she would not send her dogs to him. Now, there was video that came out of this, uh, video of the doctor kind of giving his apology or post sentencing statement. And we're gonna contrast that to a statement he made previous. Here's the, the video of the statement he made uh, upon receiving his sentencing. It's just a short statement. Um, your words these past several days, your words, your words have had a significant emotional effect on myself and has shaken me to my core. I also recognize that what I am feeling pales in comparison to the pain, trauma, and emotional destruction that all of you are feeling. There are no words that can describe the depth and breadth of how sorry I am for what has occurred. An acceptable apology. Sir, you need to stand for the microphone. An acceptable apology to all of you is impossible to write and convey. I will carry your words with me for the rest of my days. After this, the judge read a statement she had received before the trial, something that Nasser wrote to her, and the judge wrote, read that following his apology. Take a listen to the contrast between the two statements. What I did in the state cases was medical, not sexual. But because of the porn, I lost all support, thus another reason for the state guilty plea. So I tried to avoid a trial to save the stress to this community, my family, the victims. Yet look what is happening. It is wrong. I was a good doctor because my treatments worked and those patients that are now speaking out were the same ones that praised and came back over and over and referred family and friends to see me. The media convinced them that everything I did was wrong and bad. They feel I broke their trust. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Oh. So that is the statement, a little different going in than coming out. So really important point there is that that is not a statement he did in the beginning of the trial and the trial lasted for years or anything like that. That's a statement he sent to the judge last week. Last week, that's it. So he hasn't learned anything, he doesn't give a damn about any of it. And I just wanna correct him about hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. In their case, it was actually girls. A girls as young as six years old, there was 163 of them. One of the people who came in and testified, one of the victims, was not the girl, it was his mom. It was her mom because she had committed suicide already. He, Nasser had started molesting her at, at when she was 10 years old and, and, and she took her life later, okay? So now I, I don't know for a fact that the suicide's connected, but that's what the mom certainly believes and there's good evidence behind that. And he knows all that and he still just last week was, oh, it's their fault, not my fault. They, they were scorned, you molested them. It, it's Some people are unreal, so that's that's a huge part of the story. I think the second part of the story we'll get to in a, in a minute is is who else was involved and what, what did they cover up? Anytime I hear about Sexual abuse, because what we get to when we get to to this point is because somebody was brave enough to speak. Then we find out about all these people. There are so many young women out there who have been sexually abused who will not challenge somebody's power and never say anything. I I think that you know his his perception. First of all, he said. It was unfortunate what I what occurred instead of saying what I did. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with accountability, and um, 
you know, accusing the judge of the media circus. Like, it, he still hasn't owned the fact, even though he may say, I'm sorry, he will not admit that he did wrong. And doesn't realize that that's still part of the abuse that women have to endure. When you make somebody feel bad about doing something to them that's wrong, and then you still won't say I did something wrong. And I, I just think it's disgusting. And I'm so glad that he's gonna be gone away. And if the rules of prison still apply, <laughs> you don't really have a good time in prison because they don't play that. Yeah, the hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. That's someone who has acted with impunity for so long yeah. that he has no awareness of other people. And you can see, and when he gives his apology in the room, the one, the clip that we played first, you can, you can just see that he is. I mean, in my eyes, he is reacting to this effect on him. The fact that he just get, he got sentenced to at least a hundred years, essentially, yeah. to numbers like hundred and seventy-five years. So, and then. To go through, there's all these statements from the women. There were 163 people spoke, even though he was only up for seven counts of of uh, abuse. That's what he, he pled guilty to as he, part of the plea deal. Right, so he, but uh, the judge allowed 163 people to speak so that you could hear all the stories. They all, it's strange that they were all so similar, but yet so unique to the people who were giving them. And one that struck me was Larissa Boyce, who told an, a Michigan State official uh, because they shared facilities. It was a Michigan State University official who was friends with Nasser. And she tells the story of how she, Talk to someone that she was able to confide in, that she thought she could trust, and then that person just turned around and told Nasser the whole story, betraying her trust. Take a listen to this statement. I told an adult, I told Michigan State University back in 1997. Instead of being protected, I was humiliated, I was in trouble, and brainwashed into believing that I was the problem. This MSU employee, then fed me back to you, the wolf, to continue to be devoured. Instead of taking the right steps to, to report my concerns, she betrayed my confidence. So that, that's the second part of this story. So Larry Nasser is a monster and, and we all realize that. The only person who doesn't realize it apparently is Larry Nasser. Uh, but now, you know, when you look at USA Gymnastics, uh, the Caroli Ranch, the Michigan State University, all the different people that were involved. I don't know what layers of culpability they have, uh, although people should certainly look into it. Uh, USA Gymnastics has cut off ties with the Caroli Ranch where uh, a lot of this happened. Um, and But in the case of Michigan State, well, we know that 1997 story. And that's a story that unfortunately uh, ha you hear over and over again and, and why the Me Too movement is so important. Now, this is a different situation with child molestation. but. Where people report things and they're not believed, yeah. and and the rest of the people cover up for it. And by the way, also happened in the case of child molestation at Penn State with yes. Sandusky, and and in it's not worse than the original crime, but it's right up there because when you let those monsters loose and you help them shame the victims, then then yes, then then you've you know the whole institution is what keeps people down, not just that one doctor. Th this girl. Um, Larissa Boyce, yeah. Rachel Den Hollander. Okay. Oh, that's her, the last one that testified, yeah. Yeah, her description was perfect because everyone who's experienced child abuse can relate to what she's saying. He's, she said, one who is capable of manipulating his victims through coldly calculated grooming methodologies. And that is something that people who've been sexually abused, that, that is what they're subject to. It's a continuous grooming and believing that this is part of the play. And all of these adults that are rallying around these children and benefiting from their exploitation have to be accountable. They just do. Yeah, and uh, she's the one of the first people that came forward. Yeah. And that's why she was the last to testify to kind of conclude the proceedings. And the judge said, you are the bravest person I have ever had in my courtroom. What you just watched was one of the videos that we do today, but we actually do a whole two hour show every single day. It's a podcast, you could watch it in video or listen to it as audio. You can download it, you can stream it, and you get it completely ad free if you could become a member of the Young Turks. tytnetwork.com slash join.